Hey there, I just uh, recently acquired four of the new Hexbug Bex Robotics sets for 2018. Uh, they looked pretty cool and I thought I'd do a little review of these sets, show you guys what, uh, what it looks like, give you my thoughts on, on uh, the value and playability. <clears throat> this is the Gatling Rapid Fire Motorized Dart Shooter. Comes with 275 plus pieces in it. It's electronic. It's got a battery box. It's got an electric trigger or switch. <coughs> it's bi-directional. It has a motor, and uh, it also requires six AA batteries that are not included. Um, and it has. Uh, several of these plastic darts you can put eight in at a time it has a few spares in case you lose them the um, back of the box shows some more details about it it's got a dual grip it says electronic trigger motorized shooter um, the battery pack you can't see but it's inside this area um, <clears throat> It talks a lot about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, it says learn engineering techniques and educational takeaways through innovative play. I'm not 100% sure. I would say there's a lot of uh, education that's going to occur by shooting darts. Um, but you do get the electronics and the idea of a switch where the polarity of the battery will reverse the motor, you've got gear ratios, you've got the spring which when compressed is holding uh, potential energy and then uh, when released it shoots the dart with kinetic energy. So there are a number of concepts that uh, can be taught but I think most kids will just want to shoot darts. And, uh, and not think a whole lot about the, the uh, science or technology behind it. <clears throat> but one thing to know is this, uh, this trigger is bi-directional so you can pull it like a trigger normally and the motor will rotate one direction and then you can also push it away which is what this arrow is trying to show. And uh, that might be a little bit confusing. You might accidentally push it forward and fire darts when you don't intend to. So uh, I've already opened it. I've already built it. Here's the manual. This is one of the half size manuals that Bex will produce in some cases. I'm not a big fan of the half size manuals. Uh, they're definitely a lot better than they used to be when they were black and white. But even though they're in color, the size, at least for me, makes can make it tricky to uh, even just to see the holes, with, even when it's not in black and white. Uh, when you're trying to count holes, just the size of it makes it more complicated. And because of the size, it, it, they don't have enough as much space to do a one-to-one -one for all of the parts. So, for instance, uh, this axle, which is 14x axle. They don't have a one-to-one. -one. They, they have a one-to-one -one size for some of the other smaller parts, but because of the, the size of the manual, they don't have enough space for that. At the front of the manual, like all of their latest sets, they've got uh, multilingual information for the parent or guardian. I'm not sure uh, a 14-year-old, which it says on the box that it's for 14 plus. Uh, I don't think a 14-year-old is going to necessarily want their parents helping them with it um, so I'm not sure that saying it's for the parent or guardian is is uh, necessarily appropriate for a 14 plus age group but uh, it does have a lot of information here it encourages uh, whoever's building the set to count the holes um, <clears throat> one thing I typically do is, is also count notches so you can count the holes there's six holes on this one but there's one two three four five and then the sixth notch you could say on the length of this beam 
Um, and it also says to check pieces against actual size and manual. It has an example of an axle that where you might hold it up to a one-to-one -one size. In this particular case, the only axle that there is is a 14x axle, and there are, <laughs> isn't a one-to-one -one on the axle. Um, they've got here that's kind of small, but different icons that show various things in the building instructions that you should check uh, an alert, a correct, flip, incorrect, notice, and alternate view. Rotate, and then wind up, it says. Uh, it, it makes, it tries to encourage you to confirm the orientation. Um, these pin connectors, these uh, connecting parts, have a, a flat side and then a back side you could say and that can be difficult to see so they'll have a little eye icon in the manual to instruct you to pay close attention to the orientation and that's very important um, when you have the the bent pieces you can verify the angle these typically are will always be 30 45 or 60 degrees um, this measuring guide is it's good, it's slightly confusing. Um, it's got offset holes, so this is one, that's two, this would be one and a half. Uh, and throughout the manual, the, the offset holes will be marked as half. So one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, like that. <clears throat> um, the length of the axle, sorry, the length of the beam is not I mean, you can count it as the number of holes, or you can count it as the number of notches. Uh, they show a, a measurement of an axle, and they start it at this baseline here, which doesn't have a number. It's definitely not zero. And then they show that it goes up to this line here, which is on the ruler would be six and a half. But the actual length of this axle is one, two, three, four, five, six. And the same with this standoff. They show that you don't count the pin pin part of it, which is absolutely right. But then they, they line it up with this bottom line, which is not zero. But you can count it as notches as one, two, three, four, five. So even though it's at the line, which would be, you would say is five and a half, it's actually a five long standoff. And the same with this axle. It's actually one, two, three even though it lines up with what they show is three and a half, so it's three long axle. So it's overall a very good, a pretty good manual. I mean, I just would prefer it to be the full size, twice basically a eight and a half by 11 size uh, manual. In terms of parts, they show all the parts, the number of parts, so they show that you get two, you have the two by nines, two of the 2x11s. It's got some nice blue colored beams. Um, it's got this cross piece which is nice. Two of those are used to build the rotating cylinder with the uh, spring-loaded sockets on them. And they've come up with what they call the Vex Pilot electronics now. They use diff different style connectors uh, than the old electronics for Hexbug, <clears throat> the retail electronics. And this is a nice new piece. It's a bi-directional switch, polarity reversing, so depending on which direction you push this lever, it's going to connect polarity in one direction, off, and then polarity in the opposite direction. A six battery pack, so that's nice. It's, it's uh, not built into a, uh, a, a brain or a motor or anything like that. It's smaller than the uh, the old Hexbug battery box. <clears throat> so I like that. The connectors are a little awkward. I'm not a huge fan of the connectors. Um, you can't see it very well, but uh, they look like this. And you've got little grooves where you grab it by your th fingernails. Unfortunately, they stick together really tightly, so grabbing by fingernails and pulling is not very easy, but you can separate them. I think, unfortunately, you'll find kids will pull at the wires, which could lead to 
fatigue and damage the wires right at the where they connect into the plastic. Hopefully they've done a lot of testing with that and uh, and that they will not easily break. But I have found myself prying these things apart. They're just so tightly attached to each other. Oh. That tucks in here like that. The battery box here is attached with a couple of pins and then here it's a pretty nice little layout and this is not screwed but it is very firmly attached so I've dropped it and popped the batteries out of course so that is possible because there's no screw holding them together but uh, just put your three batteries on one side three batteries on the opposite side I accidentally got the polarity wrong on one of these at one point uh, so just make sure you pay attention the uh, negative side goes towards the spring if I can get it out This tucks in here and plugs it like that, and that tucks that down inside there. Tuck the wires down in there. So I like the electronics; they're nice, um, but those uh, socket connectors are a little bit tough. The motor, I don't know if it's, it's, I don't know if it's exactly the same as the old one, it, size wise I think it's exactly the same, um, definitely the connector at the end is different, but I think the internals of the motor probably are the same as the old one. Um, this set comes with six of the curved panels, which are nice, the two by I guess that's two by five, and uh, these slopes are nice as well. You can see those on the body. Yep, four of those slopes on each side, and they're nice little pieces. Uh, so five long. 2x5. You can actually attach them. <clears throat> they don't attach directly to each other, but they could attach to a, a structure behind them, which would allow you to build up a slope that is multiple layers. So you could attach like that, and then another one on top of it. You know, so um, it's a nice little piece more than just decorative but it, for, in this case it's used purely for decoration and then these curved panels you know the four of them together make a nice round grip at the back here I like that <clears throat> the way they're attached in the middle is with just a, a pin that's connected across between the beams they only included two up here, they probably could have had a third one at least. The inside there's not as much space because of this connection, uh, and you wouldn't want to get it up close to the rotating cylinder. So, uh, but it would have been nice to have maybe one more, make that a rounder grip than it is. But overall, that's pretty nice. Um, like I said, the trigger is very sensitive, bi-directional. Unfortunately, the one thing I, I don't particularly like is that it's pretty noisy. The motor just makes a lot of noise. Hopefully you can hear me over the motor noise. I imagine there will be some parents who are like, that's just too noisy, you know, so uh, it's hard to say. 
It might just be my sensitive ears, I suppose. But uh, it definitely isn't quiet. Not like you're going to sneak up on anybody. It also rotates pretty fast. I don't know what you think about that, but it makes a full rotation in just a little over a second. So you can imagine you've loaded your eight darts into this, and if you pull and hold the trigger, and if you, can, you can shoot one at a time. It's very sensitive, so you have to be very, very light on the trigger. If you hold it down, it's going to shoot all eight darts in just over a second. And then you're going to go out to collect the darts, and then it'll take you probably a minute at least to load the darts. These are the darts. Um, they have a soft tip, rubberized tip, so uh, you know, for safety. Um, those tips might come off if your 14 year old is energetic enough to choose at them or something. But uh, it slides in and then it latches at the back. I don't know if you can see that. And 